This video is HF Mobile, grounding, DC, and RF. Warning, we're talking about electricity. Use proper precaution. Now many amateurs harbor the notion that DC grounding an antenna will magically act as or replace a ground plane. It will not. The only way a ground strap could act as or replace a ground plane is to make it long enough to be a radial. That's a ridiculous notion. While the DC strap may indeed DC ground the antenna base, and it might RF ground it too, depending on its length and width versus the frequency of operation, it is by no means a replacement for a ground plane, nor is it a substructure for proper bonding. There is only one RF ground we need to deal with, and that's a proper return for the coax. It should be very close to the base of the antenna, coincident to any matching device used, and most importantly, as close to the metal mass of the vehicle as possible. Put another way, if your antenna mount is securely fastened to the frame of the vehicle, and the coax is securely fastened to the mount, no additional grounding is needed. There is one more thing to consider when the coax shield connection is raised above the ground plane. Not only are the ground losses increased, the amount of RF flowing to the motor control leads also increases, as do common mode currents flow on the coax. Therefore, obviously, this premise negates mounting antennas atop large posts, extended brackets, clamps, and luggage racks. Another misunderstood aspect is adding DC ground to various transceiver parts in an effort to control RFI and or high SWR. If a DC ground addresses your RFI or SWR problem, then something else in your installation is incorrectly installed or mounted. The ground plane is one type of ground that needs a different name applied to it. Because everyone seems to have a different opinion of what it is. Or is not. It isn't a counterpoise. Although many folks use the term synonymously, it isn't a ground strap to the nearest hard point either. In an HF mobile scenario, the body of the vehicle and the capacitive coupling to the surface under the vehicle is acting as a ground plane. And a lousy one at that. On the average, mobile ground plane losses vary between 2 and 10 ohms. 10 through 80 meters respectively. In most installations, the ground losses are somewhat higher due to improper mounting, bonding, and assumed ground conductivity. This fact is why proper bonding and mounting are of prime importance. The issue is to make all of the bolted pieces as RF conjointed as we can. Here's another way of thinking about the system. Let's assume our antenna represents a 50 ohm load, which it seldom does, and our transceiver's output is 100 watts. From Ohm's law, flowing into the antenna will be 1.4 amps of current at 75 volts. The same current and voltage must flow in the missing half of the antenna the ground plane as it were. Since both our antenna and ground plane are lossy, some of the current will be dispersed as heat and will not be radiated. Quite obviously, we want to minimize these losses. And if all else fails, talk to a mobile electronics certified professional or an ASE certified mechanic about your ham radio installation.